So I made some venison steak and cheese egg rolls. And CJ over here. Has We're making Cajun crappy fish tacos. Nice. That Joe and I caught two hours ago. <laughs> Doesn't get much fresher than that. That's the, that's the deal. So stay tuned guys as this is cooking and we'll show you the prep work too. So why, why is good at like white trout chicken? <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, some bagel? Oh yeah. yeah. One day, uh, if he, if he I couldn't even get the, I couldn't even get the lower down. It would get the down, lower. lower. It'd get down five feet above the bottom and it would just stop. That'd go. Yeah, those were the good old days out there. <laughs> What's happening? So I'd go like this and I'm like, oh, you got a fish. And it, and it happened five or six times. I took, um, this was not all too smart of me, but uh, I caught a huge toad, lake trout. Huge, bigger than the fishing pole, the jig pole, and uh. Now I'm all self-conscious. <laughs> just don't cut your finger. We'll what? have to make a fail video. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't much meat there. No, you're good. We can usually see through them when we're done. Thank you. I didn't even know. Thank you. I don't really pay attention to who I subscribe to. You weren't even subscribed to us. Wow. You're on, you're on YouTube? Oh, on YouTube. Yeah, no. You didn't follow our Instagram page for No, that, 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 that was a long time before, before all that. Most of my friends followed them before I did. Really? Yeah. It's funny how that works sometimes. I'm gonna speed this video up to like six times fast. So they're gonna think you're the fastest boy ever. Perfect. That's cool for it. I don't feel like it's going as good as usual. <laughs> there you go. Deliciousness right there. A couple, nice chunks, yeah. A couple nice chunks of meat there. Mm. Uh, who shot this deer? This one's mine. Nice! <laughs> Your first solo deer? Was that this year? Oh, well, last yeah, year lot, I was alone was too. Well, um, this oh, year right, I did yeah. a lot of like scouting myself and he was guiding moose hunts, so I had to go out on my own a lot. And um, so this time it was like start to finish my own, I would, I guess. That's great. Oh, you yeah, must I was proud. A, I was a photographer. Yeah, it was, it was pretty Oh, you were? Cool. Nice. Jeez. Let's working. see. Last year. Yeah. Yeah, I remember last year you shot a big one too. Yeah, last you? year was, that was a patch buck. Yeah. This year was not, not as big as I am. It was gonna this be. One needs to be. We actually weren't we weren't really sure exactly which one it was because we have cameras out and stuff. Um, and I thought it was a bigger deer. <laughs> <laughs> walking up to it, I, I looked at him and I'm like, it's not the one! <laughs> He's got it on video. I'm like, it's not the one. <laughs> it happens. It does. Nothing wrong with that, bro. Nice. Nice deer. Yeah. Uh, Alright, going with some Louisiana. Yeah, beautiful deer. Yeah, that's a beauty. We better sponsor it. Picked up a new sponsor, Louisiana. <laughs> Louisiana Chris Fry. Cajun. Some breadcrumbs. Then mix them together for the crunch. Oh, yeah, the fish truckers did have a little bit of crunch. We'll use it all. 
breadcrumbs in there. This is a lot more sophisticated catch and cook than I posted the other day. Yeah. Put a stick through a brook trout and started a <laughs> smudge fire on the ice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that one was smoked. Yeah. It was more smoked than... It wasn't really cooked either. It really didn't oh, even look that no. delicious. You could see the look yeah. on your face. It was yeah. like... <laughs> At 28 below, anything tastes decent. Everything tastes better on the ice. Yeah. Agreed. Breakfast sandwiches. Yep. That was, that was one of my favorite parts of fishing. Yeah. Kyle. I know, like breakfast burritos, breakfast Kyle sandwiches. Always breakfast Kyle always makes the best breakfast sandwiches. Even just plain old venison on the grill. Yeah. It just tastes so much better. Because oh, yeah. you're hungry. Mm -hmm. Your body's so cold. Your body tastes better too. Couple eggs. Let's see the lemon before What's your favorite state you've ever been to? Oh, fish. outside of Maine? Yeah. And fish? Mm. Ice fishing or open water fishing? Whatever. That's tough. Man. Probably Alabama. Really? Yeah. I loved it. Yep. I've only ice fished one place outside of Maine, so was that? that was Minnesota. No, so I, I don't have a lot to judge for ice fishing wise till next year. Probably the best crappie fishing right here in Maine. I, yeah, <laughs> both I think numbers it is. and size. From the people I talk to, it sure is. Yeah. What's we'll closing? Yeah. Nice. Which one? I hit that one. Oh, oh that one. No, that's better. Nice. This looks yeah, beautiful. Yeah. You ever had a? No, no, I'm pretty excited about them. I heard about them yesterday. <laughs> what do you like better, that or chip tacos? Steak and cheese. Wow, you just told me how much you like steak, the, the fish tacos. I was, I was shocked how much I like steak tacos. This is looking tremendous. <laughs> I'm, I'm really just figuring out how good this looks. <laughs> like wait it sounded it good. They're so it's so simple, but it it's sounded just... good. But now it's like um, <laughs> it's the light bulb. Happening. The my light bulb is, just went off for me. My mouth is watering right now. The light bulb yeah, definitely just went off when you rolled that one. Right. I was like, oh my god. No, I'm excited. Yeah, I didn't think I was all that hungry last night until those were made and I tried one and I went, I'm going to eat three more of these. <laughs> so I eat three more. I'll do these with, I'll use like a ground up venison, mm -hmm. but then I'll do it like spring roll style with cabbage and oh yeah, carrots and stuff like that. With the ground up? Yeah. yeah. And then we'll take them out on the ice and reheat them for our clients. They must go crazy. Oh yeah. So John, this is, John's like a phenomenal cook. He loves cooking. And he's bringing. Is he bringing his pizza oven? Prime rib, what? sausage, English muffins, and cheese. Dan's bringing <laughs> eggs. I figured we could would do a breakfast for lunch tomorrow. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. So. We're just going to be rolling onto the ice in the morning for yeah. this and rolling off the ice. So tomorrow's video is going to be pretty incredible then. Yes. We don't even have to catch a fish. I might have to call out of work. Yeah, I would I call out of work. I wish I'd be a little cold coming on. Yeah. I don't know what's <laughs> You got the Rona. <laughs> I remember, this is a long time ago. Um, so I was, we were chasing traps. And I think this one did, I don't think the flag really went off too well. And, uh. Remember getting to the hole and lifting it up because I think we were about to leave, I think. And I lifted up, the spool was gone. The spool was? Broken oh off. no. Broken off. So I was thinking, and I still think about it sometimes, how big that fish must have been to break off a spool. Big. How did it have been? But it never tripped the flag? You might have had a loose, loose screw there somewhere. <laughs> oh, we have two two wraps left, but I think I can only make one more. 
not enough steak. I've never had homemade egg rolls. This is pretty exciting anyway. They're way easier than you would expect. Yeah, it doesn't look terrible. No, they're not bad at all. And you can get these wraps anywhere. I got these at Walmart. Boy, my mouth is watering right now. Oh, Wyatt. <laughs> Wyatt's fired up. <laughs> this is so good. I am excited. Holy cow, looking pretty good. You know what you need to do? So those are the low calorie. That that's that's the, the yeah. healthy version of dinner. And this is going to be the, we're doing full on. That doesn't look that Oh, we're unhealthy. deep frying these babies. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot we have You'll be working up the Joe's ice cream shop making eggs. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'll have Donnie doing donuts. You're doing <laughs> egg rolls. That place will be packed. <laughs> He hasn't, he hasn't got that yet. Oh. He's not that sponsored yet. Oh. <laughs> he does have like some pussy. Well, I'm talking about that. I don't know why I do so. My little salt in here is not going to be that good. Wow, those look incredible. That's awesome. These are looking great. Yeah. That's okay. looking incredible. Let's try them out. What are they? These are venison steak and cheese egg rolls. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Today's cat. Oh, they're not burning. Well, they're looking good though. Almost there. That Don't get much incredible. fresher than that, buddy. <laughs> you caught those a couple hours ago. We caught those a couple hours <laughs> That's ago. True. <laughs> All right, guys, you're here to watch this. This is probably the best part of the catch and cook coming up is the catch, cook, and then eat part. We'll actually let you in on that. Quiet, what do you think, buddy? Passes the test? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10? Absolutely. All right, let me This is like nothing. Probably the best main surf and turf you can get. Oh yeah, <laughs> venison and crappy. Venison and crappy. It doesn't get too much better than that. That's like- In my world it doesn't anyway. Right? That, uh, that, you go out to eat and get a surf and turf meal for 50 to 100 bucks or you can just go get it yourself. Yeah. We're gonna watch this fish taco. Why are you gonna make a fish taco? Oh no you're, nope. I'm getting mine made. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty simple. Uh, oh. Yeah, cool. Let's some of that. I don't know. Do you want the salsa? Homemade salsa? He's not into avocados. I'm the only one that likes avocados. Ooh. How do you, uh... Oh, it's like glue. Ooh. <laughs> it's like glue. It's like Elmer's glue. <laughs> I'm gonna try the secret sauce. Sounds good. Looks pretty incredible, guys. It is. Dig in. Yeah. Man. You know you're fishing when you have to move the electronics off the table to eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, looking great. I can try one of these things first off. Mm. Right. That is good. So they're pretty good oh, alone, but you can also do some of this ranch secret that sauce. That is good. Yeah. What else do I need? You really get much better. This stuff's good too. Or yeah. Mm -hmm. I told you the cool. other night with our youngest kids eating this and everybody enjoying it. It's like awesome. It's yeah. an awesome feeling to know that you brought it home and everybody like loves that it. That is funny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Anna shooting the deer or you shooting the deer or moose or mm -hmm. catching the fish. That's just amazing. Yeah. And the fact that everybody loves it and it's it's organic and free range. Mm -hmm. What people need to understand is. And pretty cheap. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, well, yes, and no. Not how many times we have to go to Cabela's. For, exactly. You know, those last things. Yeah. Once you start adding up live scopes and <laughs> snowmobiles and <laughs> yeah, but that's why you got to eat more fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's one of the best things I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> that is so good. 
I would have. You see why I was so excited. Yeah, I would have never even <laughs> dreamt this up. Uh -huh. That. Holy cow. <laughs> so simple. So good. Delicious. This is something I think I'd eat every single day and never get sick of. Yeah, you can't buy something that good. Fish taco, crappy fish taco. How lucky are we guys? <laughs> Seriously, this is like gourmet, gourmet. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty lucky. I am really lucky to be here. Thank you guys so much for for having me for dinner and this incredible meal. Thank you for Thank coming. You for coming. Well, my pleasure. We were just talking about falling through the ice and beaver trapping, and I remember I'll I'll tell you guys a story when I beaver trap. I beaver trapped with. The guy that taught me was Skip Bates. He was a game warden. Just tremendous outdoorsman. He was competitive. So we would get on ice way before we should have. Like it was thin. He was about your size. Yeah. Maybe a little skinnier. <laughs> so the rule is whoever doesn't weigh the most has to go out on the ice first. Really the other bad. guy stands on shore with a rope tied around his waist. <laughs> That's how thin ice we were on. And a lot of times he's walking on like the logs on top of the ice, you know, to try to get out further to get where you need to trap these beaver. And I remember poor Skip would be out there and you could just hear it cracking. Oh. You know, you know he's going under and through. And I'd give that rope a little yank. <laughs> You know, and he'd pull back and he'd turn around and he was so mad at me. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> he'd swear he'd reach for a sidearm when I'd do that. <laughs> but that's the one rule I had when I was beaver trapped is never trap with anybody heavier than you. Yeah. Because the lightest guy goes out first. Yeah. No, it was like, when I trapped beaver, I think the year before it was like 5 to $10 a pelt. And it's just not worth it. But I did it anyway. Yeah. I don't even care. <clears throat> Have you ever heard of Oscar Kronk? Yep. So Oscar taught me how to skin beaver. He taught me most of what I know about trapping. Just just at a store, like on the, at his counter of a store. Um, I'd go in for hours. He'd just tell me, and I just soaked it in like a sponge. <clears throat> and he would, he would hike in, like you were just saying, like crazy far into these bogs. And he would trap and be, remake the trap after he'd catch one. And Edie, his wife, would sit down on her pack basket and she would clean skin that beaver in like 20 minutes. Uh, so you wouldn't have to drag it out. Yep, so you wouldn't have to drag it out. Yeah. Yep. And Oscar's the one who taught me when you fall through, and like say you fall through just to your waist, and you jump out, he said, you kick your leg up so it, obviously so the water can pour out before it gets down to your toes, but then you roll in the snow. It's like a sponge where, yeah. like, and you roll in that snow, and the snow will grab all that, huh. that liquid water. And I, it saved me quite a few days of not having to go home and, <laughs> or back to the camp. Huh. I'll take note of that if I do go out. Yeah, you put even if you put a boot through, just fall, roll over, put your leg up, and roll up the snow, and it would pack snow around, and it'll take the water off. Of it. <laughs> yeah, you catch a beaver rolling around the snow couple times and the thing is dry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Same thing. Like that's what we do. You pull it out 20 below zero rather than have an icicle and right. or pulling fur off or anything. Yeah. yeah. I remember like I was decent, like I was good at skinning, but beaver were new to me. And it's you it's challenge skin beaver with the fat and everything and tries I hated flashing. Yeah. So I, I tried to, so, so I tried to clean skin. And I remember like Skip and I sat and we set a pile of traps and he knew what he was doing. I didn't know what I was doing. And the first, I think we got like one and I scun it. It took me like two hours to put it up, like to clean skin it and put it up and, and on the board and everything. And then like two days later, I went and checked the traps all alone. And it was like the first through check, you know, on all our sets. And we caught 19 beaver that day. Oh. And as I was driving back to the warden camp, because that's where we were staying up near Clayton Lake, I remember doing the math, and I'm like, all right, so two, I was like, two hours, 40 hours. 30, yeah, <laughs> two hours times 19 beaver. If I start now and don't stop to eat or anything, I'll be out of the shack in a week. And I was like, something's got to change. So I, I remember an Oscar telling me how Edie did it. And she'd sit down and put that like right over her lap or right in front of her and how she'd clean skin it. And I got down to 26 minutes where I could clean skin it, <laughs> a full-size beaver. So, I, but I, still like eight hours of skinning right there. 
And five yeah. dollars. Yeah, but you know, it was always like coming off the years where it was like five or ten bucks for a hide for a beaver pelt. No one would trap. So then we would trap hard, and then you get paid. Like we get paid. Like we probably averaged. I bet you we averaged thirty-five on beaver. Like we got some for like as high as like eighty dollars. You know, and and some every once in a while would be like ten bucks if you catch a kid. So. We never let the previous year's prices and the forecast deter us from trapping. Right. Just because we love to and like, mm -hmm. if the state knew it, I would have paid every cent to them to do what I did. Right. Right. You know, like, but it gets to a point where you financially know, like, this isn't a hobby I need to keep anymore. Yeah. I will never recover from this. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, now I'm starting to second guess. Because it won't, you won't. You know, like I told you, that I sold. A fisher, two fox, a few mink. I shot nine big excited. prime coon with my coon hounds that year. We were selective with what we shot. Yeah. Um, we didn't shoot a lot of coon because they weren't worth anything, so we let a lot of them go. That was just after the rabies went through and their numbers were way down. But we shot nine prime coon. I think I trapped two or three or four. I just kind of did it, dub it off. I sold my bird of Kimball's. No, it wasn't him, and uh, I think I made like sixty dollars on all oh, that fur. No, mm -hmm. yeah. And I came home that afternoon. And I had a great big buck mink in my trap, and I looked at him, and I, you're not worth killing, buddy. Yeah. I let it go, and I, I haven't trapped since. Yeah. No, it wasn't so much the fair price. It was just it got to be a sport that I loved, but I couldn't afford yeah. to do anymore. Yeah. You know, I used to be That's making up. Too, though. I used to make enough money that I would buy my family Christmas presents. It wasn't a yeah. lot, but right. up to Mayor Kimball's, you'd trade some of your fur for deer skin gloves. Yeah. And, or you'd go and you'd have a little chest and you'd, you know, buy some a little trinket or something for your family. Yep. Well, I remember one year, my grandmother told me, she said, I'm saving all my money for a snowmobile so I could be the tractor. And she said, uh, you know, don't be stingy. Remember, you do good things to people, and people do good things for you. Well, mm -hmm. Unbeknownst to me, I had a snowmobile, and for Christmas that year, they, <laughs> the family got together and, and oh, helped me. But yeah, so that's awesome. You no, know, that was the last year I ever trapped. So. All right, that is gonna do it for tonight. Full belly, incredible food, incredible time with friends. Really looking forward to getting after some more big slab crappy tomorrow. Might even go after some rainbows, so it should be a great day. Uh, I'm going to try to do a little bit more reading tonight. Last night I just really got into this book and stayed up a lot later than I was expecting to, but not sure if I could tell you what this book is. I'll have to ask the author, but this is the beta copy that I've been working on, uh, helping on like an edit or a read through. So I found a lot of, a lot of stuff that, that could be helpful for him last night, but the story is just awesome. So it's been a great read and a lot of fun to read too. So I'm kind of excited to get back into it and be able to help out a little bit with some editing and also to follow along with the story, but following along with my story, thanks for tuning in guys. That was just an awesome day with CJ. I really, really enjoy fishing with him. He likes to hunt them down the way I do and just go after them hard. And, you know, the first lake we got out there and we caught a pile of fish, tons and tons and tons of smaller crappy, you know, that most places would be happy with those 10 to 12 inches. And then we moved and he made a really good decision not to fish on that unsafe ice. And we moved to another pond and we really got into them there out over some deep water. Some, you know, the quality was a lot better. We were catching probably an average of about 14 inches. So, and one over 15, which is always a plus. Great big slab. So tomorrow we're going after them. Going to try to get you something big, big on film, like over 16. We'll see. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for following along on this truck camping adventure. Maybe get two more days out of it. We'll see. See you on the next one.